Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us here at Coalesce. My name is Natty, and I am a Director of Solutions Architecture at DBT Labs, and I'll be hosting this session today. The title of this session is Petabyte Scale Lake Houses with DBT and Apache Hoodie, and we'll be joined by not one, but two Vinoths for your viewing pleasure today. Uh, Vinoth Chandar created the Apache Hoodie product at, project at Uber uh, in 2016, called it Transactional Data Lakes, Lakes, and now it's known more popularly as the Lake House architecture. He recently founded a company called One House that offers managed lake houses as a service, and he continues to serve as the Apache Hoodie Chair at the Apache Software Foundation. Vinoth Govindarajan works at, as a uh, staff software engineer at Apple, and prior to that, he was building a petabyte lake house at Uber where he worked to lower the latency and bridge the gap between the online systems and the data warehouse by designing incremental ETL frameworks for derived data sets. In his free time, he contributes to a variety of open source projects such as Apache Hoodie and DBT Spark. All chat conversation is going to be taking place in the Coalesce Petabyte Scale Lakehouses channel of the DBT Slack. If you are not part of the chat already, you have time to join right now. Visit getdbt.com community and search for Coalesce Petabyte Scale Lakehouses when you enter the space. We encourage you to ask other attendees questions, make comments, or react at any point in the channel. And after the session, the speakers will be available in the Slack channel to answer your questions. However, we encourage you to ask questions at any point during the session. Let's get started. Over to you, Vinod. All right. Thanks for the warm intro. And uh, we are very excited here today to talk uh, about Apache Hoodie and data lakes with the DBT community. Um, just to, I think since we introduce ourselves, we'll, we'll kind of like fast forward a little bit here, just get to the agenda for the day. Uh, here's what to expect. I think uh, many of you here would have interacted primarily with a fully managed cloud warehouse. Um, that's at least my, my impression. Uh, so we'll spend actually quite a bit of time uh, explaining the under, underpinnings of data lakes, their evolution, and sort of like what came to be the lake houses today. And we'll see how they st stack up as a technology against the warehousing stack and uh, introduce uh, Hoodie as well in the through that process. Next, we'll actually talk about how we can use DBT and Hoodie together and build sort of like feature-rich, uh, state-of-the-art, open uh, data lake houses. We'll also be sharing sort of like hands-on recipes so that you can take away something like very concrete from today's talk. This is a pretty short talk, uh, so we'll we'll only have time to sort of briefly tour all the different things that uh, you need to take this to production, right? And then we will show how uh, Hoodie can actually help you here with ready-made and uh, sort of like hardened uh, platform components that that you can use to build your lake. Finally, uh, community will share in, insights on the Hoodie community and how we can be a part of one as well. So let's let's go. Um, what's a lake house? So before that, let's try to understand uh, maybe the evolution of analytical data infrastructure over the last ten years. So this will kind of put in perspective, sort of why uh, this is a big shift and, and why uh, you know people need to care. Right? If you if you go back 10, 15 years, essentially uh, we are dealing with on-prem data warehouses, They're specialized databases for analytics. Right. And then if you look at what has happened in the last decade, the workloads and the usage has steadily moved towards fully managed cloud warehouses. Data lakes, on the other hand, were kind of like introduced originally as an architectural pattern, like more like how lake, lake houses are today, right? They're not downloadable piece of software. They're architectural patterns. Uh, most of them came about during the, the search and the social networking era where you know, the LinkedIn's and the Facebooks and the Twitters and like the search space is exploding. The need was, I have a lot of data. I want to process a lot of data in parallel. And from there, uh, even after, let's say, Spark came around, sort of generalized uh, data processing and workloads uh, started shift to the cloud in, in, in 2014, 2015 at Uber, uh, when we were trying to build a data lake, uh, you know, sort of like a textbook sort of way. We actually realized that it's actually very hard to build one without adding some of these core uh, warehouse or transactional capabilities uh, that you find in warehouses, right? So that is actually how we created the Apache Hoodie project. It, it's uh, like you know, uh, it's the first of its kind. What we call a transactional data lake project, 
where uh, you, we had an abstraction over the data lake, which used to be files on cloud storage or HDFS. We turned it to an abstraction, which can do transaction, update, deletes, incremental change streams. And, and that's kind of like how, how Hoodie came out to be. Uh, fast forward, there is now, you know, like many different projects around it. Um, and, and sort of like the, the idea, the architecture is, you know, has gained mainstream attention, right? And the last couple of years has seen like Databricks uh, use, uh, like, you know, has coined this term called Lakehouse, which is like pretty popular at this point uh, for, for all of us to talk about this sort of like uh, technology. So going from here, right, let's, let's drive one level down as well. So why is this like, uh, you know, like what's really changed under the hoods? Um, so what's really changed under the hoods here is that yeah, as we went from on-prem warehouses to cloud warehouses, the single biggest thing was the separation of storage and compute. Essentially, uh, cloud storage is in like kind of nearly infinite, right? You can easily scale storage uh, in just as much store, as much data as you want. And then you could spin up different, you know, flexible compute on demand to query and access the data. This wasn't the case with the on-prem warehouses. This kind of this core aspect explains the popularity of cloud warehouses, where you know most people are struggling with scalable BI. I've steadily moved to the cloud, mostly because of this. Right. If you now go to the the lakes, the, try to understand what the you know the technical uh, differences here are. Uh, Data lakes actually have always been like this. Uh, even you know, in 2015, if you're running Presto on top of HDFS or Facebook, you are still doing you know decoupled storage and compute. But the lakes, what they really lacked was this kind of transaction layer between storage and the query engines, which can do sort of these table maintenance, management, these kinds of things, trying to code concurrency control, and also a lack of a more scalable metadata layer so that query planning can be efficient. That's fundamentally what I think the lake house kind of projects have like brought to the table, which is they introduce this new layer, transactional layer now uh, between uh, storage and query. And you can see that these are like architectures are sort of like approaching each other from different directions, right? And put summarizing all this, if you now look at how they stack up today, um, and I you know, use four, four aspects here to compare, um, you can see that, you know, Barrows is basically fully managed, closed source solutions, you know, vertical solutions, right? Um, and lake houses could be open depending on, you know, what projects, vendors that you use from. So there's like a very, like different flavors of openness that comes here. And, um, you know, Barrows is primarily optimized for BI because it still, you know, uses a lot of different techniques up from the optimizer down below, you know, employing, uh, servers for tracking large scale metadata and whatnot. Uh, but lakes are traditionally, you know, started from this, the strengths have been around large scale data processing that you see in machine learning, data science and AI and the BA on the lake, lake house is getting like better and better over time, right? And uh, viruses are you know, mostly fully managed and lake houses, you have a like a, you know, like a dozen projects that you kind of like have to understand put like build an open architecture yourself. And we'll talk about how Hoodie can actually help here down the line. And uh, Varos is generally speaking, when you take petabyte scale uh, ETLs and you on like, you know, as a technology, you know, like lake houses or uh, lakes really uh, scale much, much better for these kind of workloads. And Varos typically is expensive as you scale, uh, scale out and have more data in your organization. And so Hoodie is a lake house platform. Essentially it offers open formats, transaction, concurrency control, uh, managed perf tuning, sync cal this, like essentially a, a, the, the core storage kernel plus all the different services that you need to operate a lake is what you get in Hoodie. And, and it was built to be interoperable from day one. The very first release in Uber actually had to work with, for example, those the same hoodie tables are queryable on Hive, Spark, and Presto. So it, some this interoperability is something that is built into this layer. And uh, just to lighthouse like a few use cases here, uh, incremental reads, field level upsets. Uh, you know, hoodie can deliver our streaming latency by kind of like careful design of storage layout and the services that need to operate on the the tables. There's a full fledged uh, multi model indexing uh, system. 
a um, lot of different warehouse functionality like clustering already built in uh, you know provides different modes of concurrency control and you know and also and if you going back to the lake example right takes a lake and builds a layer metadata layer on around it so that you can do time travel you can do roll back your like table to a point in time and all these sorts of different data management becomes very easy and it uh, has integrations with like about a dozen different engines so you typically write data using spark or flink and then query them using pretty much all major lake engines and also warehouses so it's like one interoperable layer that uh, you can sort of like you know build management on your own and then query it from everywhere and uh, some of the wins sharing some wins from production here uh, you know like you can see uh, it's been proven out at very large scale at a lot of different companies and a lot of them have been able to achieve pretty much uh, things that are not uh, probably very doable even on the warehouses today, which is minute level data latencies, uh, streaming data integration uh, into this sort of like what we call a streaming data lake pattern. So yeah, with that, I'll just like, you know, uh, introduction, I'll just hand it back to, you know, to just go into DBD and Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Vinod. Um, now we know uh, what is the lake house and the evolution of it. Let's build one using the open source software. Uh, we are excited to announce that DVD uh, is uh, integrated with Hoodie. Now you can use these two technologies to build the open lake house. In order to build a lake house, uh, you need a few components. So let's talk about, let's start with the requirements. What are the components you need to build a lake house? First and foremost, you need a open table format which supports asset transactions. There are three uh, choices out there, where, which is Apache Hoodie, which is well integrated with DBT, or the Delta Lake, which is uh, integrated with DBT, but it, it needs database runtime to unlock all these features, and Apache Iceberg, which is not currently integrated with DBT. Uh, the next comes the data ingestion tool, uh, for which there are a lot of uh, open source tools available. At the same time, a lot of data integration service, a lot of startups offers as well. So you could use any of those as well as you can actually use the open source tool as well. And for data transmission tool, you all know that what is a popular uh, tool in the planet and DBT is one, and we are going to use that for building this uh, lake house. Uh, next, to process a huge volume of data, you need a distributed data processing engine. And Apache Spark is much evolved and it is well suited for this job and this de facto popular choice for this kind of workload. And uh, Hoodie uh, is uh, already integrated with all the cloud storages out there, most of the popular uh, cloud storages, as well as it works well with HDFS as well. And then finally, you need a query engine. You can bring your own favorite query engine such as Presto, Reno, or Spark, or other query engines of your choice. Uh, now we understood what is what are the requirements. Uh, let's dive into uh, to the details of the architecture. To build a lake house, you need a way to extract and load the data into a Hoodie table format, which is which then can be transformed in place using DBT. DBT uh, supports Hoodie out of the box with the DBT Spark adapter. When creating model data sets using DBT, you can choose Hoodie as a file format for your tables. With Hoodie's transaction layer, it is very easy and efficient to query the raw data as well as the derived data with multimodal indexes and other optimizations which Hoodie performs on top of your data lake so that all your queries are magnitude faster than your traditional techniques. Uh, that's the reason even for the machine learning, you can actually, instead of querying from the data data sets, you can actually query the raw data uh, as well with the same performance, even if you're scanning huge volumes of data with multiple uh, partitions or multiple six months worth of partitions. Uh, now let's dive into the details of how Hoodie and DBT works together. So it's very simple. There are only three steps involved. The first step is you need to have a tool to extract and load the raw data set uh, into a Hoodie data set. Um, that is the first step. The second step is uh, you configure uh, DBT to work along with Hoodie uh, on your DBT project. Then finally, once you configure that, you can actually build incremental data uh, DBT models and perform field level updates, deletes, and upsets using uh, Hoodie, which which are un uh, which the whole features are unlocked using Hoodie. 
Next, uh, let's dive into the first step. The first step in building your data lake is bringing your data into your data lake. So uh, from the streaming uh, solutions like Kafka and other places, you need a way to bring in the data. There are multiple choices, as I said before. I'm going to go with Hoodie's native tool called Streamer, since all the ingestion features are pre-built and battle tested in production at scale to operate at a petabyte scale. And we build the same in Uber and other companies, as we know pointed out. Uh, Hoodie Streamer does the EL part of the extract, transform, load operation uh, process. And it is extremely good at uh, loading and optionally transforming the data from multiple sources and uh, actually transform it within your lake house as well. Uh, Hoodie supports reading from multiple sources and uh, like Party, Kafka, uh, Avro, JSON, even Protobuf and other, other, other formats. Uh, and it supports write, audit, publish pattern using the pre-commit validators. So before you publish the data, either it is a raw data or a data data, you can actually use the pre-commit validator to make sure that your, uh, your data, which is landing, is passing the audit, then landing the data. Uh, and with Hoodie's concurrency control, which is very critical component when you are doing parallel operations, a parallel writes to a table, such as uh, running a ingestion job at the same time invoking a backfill job for a huge volume. Uh, concurrency control uh, makes sure that both the writes are succeeding. Uh, and uh, with the Hoodie's um, uh, checkpointing mechanism, you can actually achieve 100% completeness on your data as well. Uh, now we know uh, that we understood what uh, uh, what tool to use. Let's see how to use it. You can use um, Hoodie Data Streamer tool uh, via command line, or if you can schedule it using your favorite scheduler, or you can run it as a step function using Amazon's EMR since Hoodie is installed and configured out of the box. Um, as you can see, there are multiple options available for you to uh, choose from and to fine tune your ingestion job with checkpoint reads, continuous modes, and enabling Hive and other such catalogs such as uh, BigQuery or Snowflake as well. When you write a data in Hoodie format, you could actually query it using BigQuery, Snowflake, and other popular choices as well. To use Hoodie, uh, it's very simple. All you have to do is uh, choose the file format as Hoodie, either in the dbt project.yaml file globally for all your models, or per model, you can configure using the config uh, macros uh, and specifying Hoodie as a file format. After choosing Hoodie as a file format, you can create materialized data, materialized data sets using dbt, which offers additional benefits as a uh, unique to Hoodie table format, such as field level updates, delets, and incremental weights. Uh, let's uh, see how we can build um, incremental models using dbt. Among all the materialization types, only incremental models allows you to process the data which are fresh every time since the last time you uh, you ran your dbt model uh, which unlocks the powers of the hoodie as well to use the incremental model all you have to uh, tell dbt is how to uh, filter out uh, uh, in fresh data using uh, incremental uh, like um, macros so dbt provide you the macro called is incremental which is very useful and filters ex filters uh, exclusively for incremental incremental materializations. To perform field level updates using incremental models, you need to define the uniqueness constraint of your model. A unique key is a primary key which tells which row to insert and which row to update on your uh, uh, table. Um, once you specify this unique key, that is translated into an internal hoodie record key field, which it, it, hoodie uses to perform both the insert and update operations. Uh, a merge, uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, with uh, the merge strategy, you have the flexibility to specify the set of columns which needs to be updated as part of this model. So when you say merge update columns as message and update timestamp here, uh, when you every time you run this model, only uh, these two columns gets updated. All the other columns, uh, previous values are kept intact. When you're, this is particularly useful when you are reading from multiple different sources and updating the data sets uh, only for specific columns. Uh, now you know understood the basics of how to use this. Let's uh, see how you can fine tune the advanced hoodie configs. If you're a power user and you there are like hundreds of hoodie configs available, 
all of those has default values but if you want to optimize that or if you want to configure it and override those values you can specify that using the options uh, op options flag here options um, parameter in the config method uh, in addition to that using pre hook uh, 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 config you can actually specify spark config additional spark configs as well now you understood how to use dbt with hoodie let's take a big uh, take, take a peek behind the scenes on how uh, hoodie uh, performs all these transaction layer operations uh, behind the scenes with the, with the introduction of sql dml support with from the hoodie point end version it became possible for hoodie and dbt to work together when you write a merge incremental strategy here uh, under the hood hoodie translate all these select cte statements into appropriate merge and update statements as Spark SQL queries, which are configured with a unique key constraint based on which it performs either update or delete. Thanks for listening. Uh, now Vinod will wrap up with Spark to production. What do you do? All right. Hey, uh, thanks so much. Uh, you know, um, like like we discussed before, right? Uh, Lakos is open. It's a, it's a, you know, a exciting new architecture to be choosing for your data, but it needs builders to build and operationalize it. And this is the one area where I think you will find a lot of, uh, you know, like differences when, if you are used to working with the managed cloud warehouse. And here is where I also create, Hoodie creates ton of value in terms of for your team to be able to quickly operationalize your uh, data lake house. So this is like a OSI network sort of like view uh, of what the project provides. Again, uh, we, we may not have a lot of time to dive deep into all of them, right? But uh, high level, there is a you know on top of cloud storage and open file data formats, there is a this like database layer which provides you like indexes. Uh, you know, we're building caching, a meta server, and other many other things here. It provides a standard set of services that can main, manage your table, concurrency control, and whatnot. And then you have the programmatic APIs, which includes code. Uh, mostly we support JVM languages at this point. Um, we support PySpark though. And essentially like all the different interfaces to reading and writing data. And then uh, you can go to a query engine and sort of like, you know, uh, query this data, um, write ETLs or write pipelines which produce in hook tables. Also on the other side, uh, we, we've actually built a quite a bit of platform services and like so streaming in just service, catalog syncs, admin CLIs and whatnot to actually help you operate the link, right? So you can also directly use uh, some of these if there's a use case fit. And moving forward here, uh, you know, Hoodie support just again, like a quick tour of all the other things you need to consider um, right, uh, to, to production is the lake house. First thing is you need to choose between different table types. Again, Hoodie here offers a uh, couple of different types uh, of things. And, and if you ever hear copy and write or merge and read, basically these concepts are what Hoodie kind of like pioneered. Like there is a table type which can support like higher write cost, but keep the query speed uh, constant. There's another one which allows for more flexible, you know, sort of like trade-offs between reads and writes. So it, you can actually choose, right, uh, depending on your workloads, uh, just like any database would let you do. And to maintain your tables, you need then uh, other processes uh, like compaction uh, that we'll talk about in the next slide. Um, you know, sort of like you, you need you need to, so the Hoodie can when you're using the MOR or merge and read table type, Hoodie can queue up these database changes and then sort of apply them at a later time. And Hoodie provides the entire uh, set of like you know strategy, scheduling, execution, or runtime for executing this kind of like activity on the table. And uh, clustering is is uh, probably something uh, you know most of you are familiar with uh, in in the Varo setting, right? You need to cluster your tables to sort of control file sizes on the lake, and also to sort of like uh, cluster them based on locality to improve query performance. Once again, uh, Hoodie uh, has a clustering service uh, that we'll quickly see in the next slide, where it can you can define some schedule for and uh, generate a plan for scheduling a clustering and sort of execute the plan with the product strategy, the different sort of like different sorting and clustering algorithms that Hoodie comes out of the box with. And, and these are actually really things that if you're coming from the warehouse uh, world, you you find value in actually the fact that Hoodie gives you 
all of this in a very platformized sort of way. So you can go run it, right? These are usually fully managed services in like some of these warehouses that you use. And uh, again, it offers flexible query types. Uh, you can choose different kinds of queries on the same physical table for different uh, use cases. Like for example, uh, incremental uh, queries can help you build incremental incrementalizing the ETLs and uh, you know you know we're just talking about the incremental model. This actually would be like one area for us to actively invest around the DBT hoodie integration. I also know a ton of interesting work is going around this. Uh, with engines like you know sort of materialize and dbt right so th there are like lots of similar sort of like uh, uh work ahead here and uh finally i think none of this is really possible without the hoodie community it's a super awesome community uh diverse set of pmc committers and pre-installed into a bunch of cloud providers and uh, you know uh, that shows our contributor growth over time and uh yeah so uh if you're if you're interested, and, and we have like a lot of success stories um, that we haven't had a chance to even cover here. And uh, you can see uh, like a variety of use cases from like CDC warehousing to so like real time advert advertising and all, all sorts of different uh, pipelines being written there, out there. And finally, if uh, you know this is uh, interesting and, in, and you want to be part of the community um here are some resources to get you started uh, our docs lives uh, in these places there's a collection of blogs that you can go read and sort of like understand different use cases and how, how the technology has been used um that's a the qr code is a link to joining our slack community here where you know we hang out it's a pretty, uh, you know ask questions uh you know beginner to uh intermediate to advanced questions there to just understand hurry and uh, GitHub Twitter, and uh, you know, and also if you want to join ASF, uh, the ASF mailing list, which I highly recommend, you can just send an empty email uh, to dev subscribe. That's where most of the dev editions, uh, like new releases, are being discussed and things like that. Right. So with that, I think we are at the end uh, for talk here. Uh, thanks again uh, for you know. Uh, being here and this was actually a very exciting talk for us so thanks again yeah thank you to both of you for such a great presentation it's really interesting learning about how hoodie really contributes to that storage and compute separation and all those efficiencies that it brings so um thanks again really appreciated it uh for everybody else if you'd like to join the q a with our speakers please stay in that coalesce petabyte scale lake houses channel on the dbt community slack and submit your questions and comments there um if not uh, the next sessions coming up are titled Empathy Building and Data Work and How Preset Integrates DBT with Apache Superset to Deliver on Headless BI and Surface Metrics. Both of those are going to be starting at 345 Central, uh, and we hope to see you there. Thanks so much. Thank you.